Hey guys, welcome back to the channel again tonight. I hope everyone's doing well. As you may see, it is completely dark here at the moment. Uh, it's late on in the evening and it's autumn time here in Ireland, so the nights are really drawing in. So maybe for the foreseeable future, when I do these nighttime uploads, you're gonna be seeing artificial light and you're gonna be seeing the light from the car. I hope it doesn't put you off. Picture quality is maybe not great, but this channel isn't about picture quality. It's not about sound quality. It's not about how I look. It's about message quality. And I'm hoping and believing and praying that you're all blessed by the Word of God. Not by the Word of Rick or what I'm trying to say, but by the Word of God. I'm just trying to speak God's Word faithfully to try and encourage people who need to be encouraged and to try and speak words of hope and salvation to those who are lost. So if it's your first time here tonight, you're very, very welcome. And if you're a returning visitor, you're also very welcome. And if you haven't already done so, hit the subscribe button and hit the notifications button. And then whenever I do any of these uploads, they will be uh, pinged out to your device, whatever the device is that you're using, or at least you'll be notified when there's new content to watch. Amen. So what I want to talk about tonight, I want to talk about stress and trouble and worry. Okay, stress, trouble, and worry. These are things that we cannot avoid in our lives. As Christians, as non-Christians, it doesn't matter. We're going to have stress and trouble in our lives. And there is no avoiding it. And there is no getting around it. So what do we do? What do we do? I'm going to have maybe a few uploads looking at what we can do to reduce the impact and reduce the effects of stress and worry and aggravation in our lives, okay? That's simply what I want to do. Because I don't know about you, but sometimes I get very stressed and it's not very nice. And when you get stressed, it changes you somehow. You can become a different person also. It can affect your health, it can affect what's going on in your head, inside your heart, inside your body. It's not good. But the Bible's good. This thing is good. The reason why? Because it gives us solutions to all the problems that we have in our life. And there's just two portions of scripture that I want to look at tonight. One of them is just a single verse from Job chapter 14 and verse 1. And listen to what the Bible says. It says, man that is born of a woman is of few days and full of trouble. Think about that. Man that is born of a woman, that's all of us tonight. We've all been born of a woman. We have just but a few days and those days are full of trouble. So what do we do with the troubles in our lives? There's so many biblical references as to what we should do. The first one I'm going to take today is from the book of Matthew, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6. And these are the words of Jesus Christ. And to me, there is no greater teacher than Jesus Christ. You know, anything that comes out of his mouth is just pure gold. And it applies to any situation that we may find ourselves in in our life. So Matthew's Gospel, chapter, chapter 6, Jesus says, Therefore I say unto you, his disciples, or the people that were following, or the people that were coming to him for advice and to listen to him preach. What does he say to these people? What's he saying to us tonight? He says, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. Take no thought for your life what you will eat, what you will drink, or for your body, what you will wear. Is life not more than meat, and body not more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They don't reap, they don't sow, they don't gather food into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much better than them? So Jesus begins by saying, take no thought. A lot of stress and worry in our life is caused by thoughts, our thoughts, overanalyzing situations, trying to predict what will happen in the future, trying to second guess what life will throw at us. And Jesus is very specific here. He says, take no thought. Take no thought, number one, for your life, for what you will eat, for what you will drink, for your body, what you will wear. He says, take no thought. These things will take care of themselves. Then he uses the example of the birds of the air. He said, look at the birds of the air. 
They don't rape. They don't sow. They don't have barns. They don't harvest. And yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not more precious than the birds of the air? Jesus says, of course you are. Jesus will make sure that you're clothed and that you're fed. The Bible says that having food and clothes, let us be content. I did an upload a while back on contentment. It says having food and clothes, let us be content. And that's what we're guaranteed here. We're guaranteed food and clothing. Then he says in verse 31, he says, Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or what? how will we be clothed? For all these things do the Gentiles seek after. For your heavenly Father knows that you have need of these things. God knows what you need. Okay, God knows what you need. He knows your circumstances. He knows your situations. But seek first the kingdom of heaven, or the kingdom of God, and his righteousness. And all of these things will be added to you. Sometimes we get it the wrong way around. Sometimes we seek these things first and we say, God, when we get all the things that we need, then we'll seek your kingdom. No, that's the wrong way to do it. You're told to seek the kingdom of God first and his righteousness. And all those things will be added to you. Verse 34 says, take no thought, therefore, for tomorrow. For tomorrow will take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient today is the evil thereof. Too many people are caught up with tomorrow. Too many people are wondering what will happen to me tomorrow? What will happen next week? What will happen next month? What will happen next year? What will happen in 10 years to my children? We're told not to think about that business. It's not wrong to make plans for the future, but our main concern should be today. Jesus said, take thought for today. There's enough trouble today to be dealing with without worrying about tomorrow. So if you're a worrier, or you're concerned about life, or concerned about your future, or your current circumstances, the first thing I'll say to you is, read the words of Christ in Matthew's Gospel, the ones that I've just read out. He tells us not to take thought, not to be preoccupied mentally with the basics, the fundamentals, like food and clothes, and what we'll drink, and what we'll wear. He says, your heavenly father knows you've need of these things. And if he can do it for the birds of the air, then how much more will he do it for you? Tells us not to be concerned about our life. Tells us not to be concerned about tomorrow. Don't think about it. Don't ruin today by worrying about tomorrow. And most of the time, the things that we worry about never even come to pass. Our joy can be robbed today by our stresses and concerns of tomorrow. So that's the first step in taking control of over your worries and your stresses and your problems in your life. The first step is don't go too far ahead. Don't overanalyze. Focus on today. Deal with the business of the day. And let tomorrow take care of itself. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. So I hope you're blessed by that message tonight. And I hope it's given you something to think about. If you're a worrier, if you're a worrier, stop worrying. Stop worrying about tomorrow. Stop worrying about your clothes. Stop worrying about what you'll eat and drink. Look up. The next time you feel like worrying, look up. See the birds. Jesus said, look at the birds of the air. Your heavenly Father feeds them. Does he not care about you more than them? Hope you're blessed tonight. If you're blessed tonight, you can share this message with someone. If you feel like leaving a comment, do it. It's up to you. But either way, let's get the focus on today. Not tomorrow or the next day, but today. And by God's grace, if we wake up tomorrow, we can repeat the process. But that's step one in taking these worries and concerns under control. In Jesus' name, amen.